Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you guys how to set up a simple project utilizing Scene2D, uh, which is part of the libgdx framework. Now, I'm sure uh, those of you who are uh, have kind of stuck around, uh, I created my own game state manager and whatnot and have done a lot of my own hard coding to get a lot of functionality out of my game. Now, this isn't always necessary, as with uh, libgdx, it's kind of there to hold your hand a little bit, and um, you don't have to write as much code as I've written. However, the logic can get a little confusing, and it will, um, it'll be a bit different than what we've been working with, and I, it's not necessarily where you have to use this as kind of your project structure or back end, but uh, it, it's definitely something to keep your eye on uh, or mess around with, and figure out if you like it or not. Um, Scene2D is useful for uh, game state transitions. It kind of has that set up for you um, and forces you to have a game state kind of setup. Uh, the main application class will essentially become the game state manager for you. Um, and then there's also these screens, which will be considered the game states. And and in those game or yeah, in those game states, the screens, uh, you can utilize another object called the mm -hmm. stage, which will have uh, you can use it for actors, so for like entity positioning um, and displacement, and you also get what are known as scene two D actions for interpolation effects or screen transitions, and they're also in the stage you can implement simple UI elements such as buttons and um, clickable areas or text fields and whatnot and easily position them around the screen. So uh, let's just get started. Um, the first thing you'll kind of notice, I have this project set up and there are some pre-assumptions that you know how to import a project into Eclipse or IntelliJ um, and get this basic project set up for you. you know, you'll be working in the core. Um, You'll have your main game uh, class, which I tend to call mine application as just the main sing uh, singleton class that we'll be working with. You can call it anything you want, like the name of your game or something. Don't name it something like game, though, uh, just because that will get a little uh, muddled down in code. It's very generic. So just be mindful of how you're naming things. Um, and use proper naming conventions in Java and whatnot. Um, so typically when you create a, a project using the libgdx project creator uh, GUI, it'll have this class set up for you and it'll extend application adapter. We're gonna change that and that's gonna be game now. So that is of a com bad logic gdx game. So uh, if you notice, after I did that, nothing in here has changed. Like, we don't need any more other methods. There's really nothing different about this class. There's just going to essentially be less code in this class than normal. Um, but you'll notice that I have a camera and a batch that I set up, and they are public, so I can access them outside of uh, this game class and be able to access them in my screens that I'll be creating in just a second. Um, one thing to note down here in the render, you'll notice I have the regular... Um, buffer cl uh, screen clearing uh, commented out and that's because I've uh, what you need to do when you're working with a, a game object you need to have you need to call the super class render method and that is because uh, when you are working with the screens you're not doing anything in here you'll kind of notice that right off the bat you're not going to be doing anything in this game state um, other unless you have like fancy initialization code or uh, need to set up particular loading screens and whatnot. Um, so when you set the screen to your game, the first screen, uh, the super render calls the render method of that screen. So that's that's why this is pretty important to note. Just uh, call super.render and you'll be good uh, from here on. And then your, of course, regular dispose method. You should already know what this does. Um, it's great for me memory resource management and whatnot. So always remember to, to dispose what you can, when you can, and always make sure you're disposing in the right order as well, because you don't want to drop something that is required by another thing or has a dependency. Um, so, 
and you'll notice I have these variables up here. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I kind of use that. Uh, so in my desktop launcher, um, I call the application title V width, V height, that's virtual width, virtual height, and version. Just kind of simple settings so I don't have to open this desktop launcher class every time. Um, the same thing goes for Android. Uh, so I can just set the configuration from here instead of always having to go back in there every time and change it in two different places. So. Um, Really, we've done everything we need to do in this main game class, so let's get our first screen set up. Uh, what you're going to want to do is just create a new class. I created a, another package called Screens inside my main package of, uh, I just called this Slides. It's going to be a game I was going to work on, but uh, who knows. Um, so I'm just going to call this Splash Screen. Okay, and the screen is an interface object, so we're going to want to implement that. And then it's going to kind of yell at us here, and we're going to want to import. And then there's also another thing we need to do is uh, implement all those methods. And so you'll see there's uh, quite a few of them. There's seven, I believe. Yeah. So you'll notice uh, show, hide, pause, resume, Dispose, resize, render. Kind of some some of them are methods you've probably seen before, but others are a little bit different, um, such as the pause and resume and the hide and show. Um, so dispose, resize, and render all do the same thing you'd expect them to do. And like I said, uh, the super dot render will go to the game object, which uh, we'll call the render of the current screen that is set. Um, and also, I'm going to take this code actually and move it over to my render here. Okay, import those. And uh, so just real quick, I'm going to get the basic constructor set up. You do need a constructor for all your screens. Uh, it's basically like the create method of um, when we made game states in another video, but at, or you're just, it's where you initialize all your variables and everything. Um, so public, splash screen, and final application app. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to request a uh, the singleton instance of my application class. Uh, that is so I can use that to set the screen from inside this class. So I'm just giving it a reference to what game I'm contained in. And that's going to be useful for you everywhere in these screens. Um, so we're going to do private final application app. I'm just calling it app because keeping it short is just nice when you're using it down the road. Um, OK. And so now that we have a reference to our main application, now uh, if you'll notice in here, so this dot app dot, I can set the screen, I can uh, get the camera, get the batch, um, and you know get whatever screen I'm currently in. Or um, yeah, that's all you really need to use is just getting the camera batch and setting the screen. Otherwise, you're probably not going to be doing too much with this object. But those are fairly uh, those are, those are called and used fairly often throughout your screen you're in. So um, that's how you'll be able to access them by creating this reference. So now to kind of go through some of the methods you haven't seen before. Um, show is called whenever the game sets the screen to this object. So that will be called once upon entry into the screen. Um, and it's not like the constructor. So the constructor will be called once in general, uh, overall, once this object is created. And show uh, will be called once every time that the game sets the screen to this object. So um, this is where you'd have like initialization for setting up the game. Um, this in the constructor would probably have like you have the world uh, boxer D world set up and whatnot and all the textures loaded this would just kind of reset everything so show would just reset all those variables to their defaults or wherever they need to be or um, loading the level that you're jumping into um, so to 
uh, look at the counterpart to that, you have hide, and that is called anytime the screen is changed to something else. It'll be called before the screen gets uh, set to something else. So this is where you save save stuff, save uh, states, or any other kind of code, or any other kind of uh, game information they need to back up or save or um, modify in some way. Uh, and so then you get to the pause and resume, and these are you can kind of call these on your own, um, or even in the application you might have some special stuff in here where you call it the pause or resume. Uh, but I'm not going to be focusing on those just yet. Um, resize does the exact same thing uh, you'd expect it to, resizing the screen. This is what happens when you resize a screen. Um, dispose is, of course, again, for memory management and disposing any objects you have the opportunity to dispose. Um, so let's, let's see. So we got our basic screen set up. This is a basic splash screen. Nothing's really going on other than setting the clear color of uh, our buffer. Um, so let's go back into our application real quick. Nothing's really going on right now. Uh, so I, I think if we run it, it might actually not, it might crash. Yeah, so you're going to get this weird flicker. Um, so what we need to do uh, in your create method, so this dot set screen new splash screen this. So because we request uh, the application singleton, we're passing it to that. Um, and uh, this will set the screen, or rather the state. Just think of this as like setting the game state. Uh, that's probably the easiest way to understand that, in, in my opinion, as uh, someone who's done a little bit of game development here or there. Um, so we're setting the game state to the splash screen state. Um, and you'll want to do this in the create just so it has a state to start off in. Um, from there, in the splash screen, you'll be able to control where it goes after that. So. That's all you really might want to add here, uh, just for the sake of simplicity. So now if I run it, we're going to get a solid gray color like we had before. And that is because we are now in the splash screen. And you'll notice like if I change this color to, let's say, like 8, um, it'll be a little bit more red. And that'll signify we really are in that splash screen. So perfect. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to kind of stop here just because this might be a little bit uh, of information to take in. Um, do kind of put some system dot 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 print lines in these methods here to test out when things happen. Understand the life cycle of uh, when hide and when show and when pause resume or resize or uh, render is called. Um, so you can kind of see how these screens are working um, and what methods are getting called when. So with that, I hope you enjoyed what we've gone through so far. Uh, I'm going to continue picking up next time with uh, putting an image on the screen and showing you guys how to transition to another screen or have like a fade out effect uh, for really basic screen transition. So with that, uh, like, comment, subscribe as usual, and uh, hope to see you next time.